Hello everyone, you're welcome to this video. My name is Michael Darko, the creator of Leaf PHP, and today we are going to be talking all about Leaf. So what Leaf is, features, a little history, and all that stuff. So let's get into it. First of all, what exactly is Leaf that we've always been talking about? So Leaf is simply just a PHP framework that helps us create clean, simple, but very powerful web apps and APIs quickly and easily. So the whole idea here is Leaf just introduces a much cleaner and easier to grasp syntax, so a much simpler structure to PHP, but it also maintains PHP's flexibility. So it doesn't give you the constraints of a full framework once you know php you can easily and quickly get started with leaf um, so basically leaf has simple but powerful features it's super approachable um, it's easy to learn you don't need to master any weird concepts no additions it's just straightforward it's versatile it can fit in any environment any project since it's just raw PHP, it can run anywhere. It's efficient, so it doesn't get in your way. It just provides functions and classes to get things done quickly and without any hassle. It's super light, the main source being about 30 kilobytes. It's secure, it comes with some inbuilt security tools, and it's progressive. So you don't really need to build your entire application with Leaf. You can just select pieces of Leaf to use in your application. And you might be asking where all of this started from. So Leaf started in October 2019 as just a basic PHP boilerplate. So along the line, it grew into a framework and here we are today. So we've had three major versions. Actually, the version three is not yet out. It's in its release candidates phase. So you can say it's ready for use, but just needs a little more testing. And of course, the first commit for version three was on 23rd September 2021. So that's a couple of months back from now. And the whole idea was just to allow people to be able to create complex applications with very simple code. You shouldn't need to learn a bunch of concepts to be able to build a simple application or a complex one. Leaf allows you to use these simple functions and classes to achieve outstanding results. And that's where simplicity and efficiency come into play. So Leaf sounds amazing, but what do you really need to get started with Leaf? and surprisingly all you need is basic php knowledge so if you know a little bit about php then you can jump right into leaf funny enough object oriented programming is not a must know to get started with leaf since leaf is actually going full functional you won't really be working with classes and stuff like that much so basically just basic php knowledge so as a php beginner you can jump right into leave the next day and we've seen some people actually do this so a basic understanding of web conventions like apis and all those would play a major role in your applications of course you can learn them as you build so it's not a must know before jumping into leave so how does leave work what you should keep in mind is leaf is just a php framework so all that it does is it provides functions and classes to speed up your work. So unlike other frameworks and libraries and all that, Leaf doesn't push you into weird concepts and all those. Leaf just gives you functions and classes which speed up your work and take away the chances of you making some mistakes which PHP actually allows you to do. So all of those just make Leaf really simple and fun to use. So let's create a Leaf 2 app right now. So I'm just going to open up my terminal real quick. And we'll be using the Leaf CLI to do this. 
there's a whole video about the leaf cli talking about the features and all that stuff so you can watch that video if you don't know how the leaf cli works so let's jump into it so we're just going to be like leaf create and i'll just name this l2 up and we are going to make a version 2 up with the basic leaf scaffold and we run this real quick and our dependencies quickly install and we should be good to go so i cd into l2 up and i can just open this up with vs code okay so this is a basic structure for our leaf up and this is a leaf 2 up by the way so actually this is a vendor folder that holds all dependencies we have a configuration for our server we have a composer.json and composer.lock these are files for managing our dependencies so all none of these stuff you have anything to do with leaf except keeping track of dependencies and then those dependencies themselves so this is the only file we need which is actually our app itself so when we open this we get this simple application here and all we are actually doing here is we are importing our dependencies we are initializing leaf we are creating a get route so that when we hit this up we just reply with some json data so we have a message with hello world so that's pretty much all we are doing so this just runs our application this is a basic simple hello world app you can already see how simple it is there is good code completion and all of that stuff with leaf so you have a pretty good time using leaf all in all um so this, this is as simple as it gets this is already much simpler than pretty much just about every framework out there there is almost no other php framework that will allow you create a basic app like this in just 11 lines of code so that's just how much leaf does for you it's super simple super easy to use so let's continue our talk right so what we just saw was leaf 2 you saw how simple leaf 2 is it's really simple there's good code completion it's fast it's pretty much everything you would expect from a good php framework but then there were a few problems with leaf 2 and those are leaf 2 is bulky with so much going on so leaf 2 actually has so many features and most of those features are not used in people's everyday apps so yes there's a ton of features and people would use only a couple of them and the bummer here is that leaf 2 tries to do a lot for you so that you don't need to do anything in your app you just up and use the code you want so a lot of this code is initialized for you even though you don't use it in your apps and a lot of that just takes a toll on your app so although leaf 2 is one of the fastest frameworks out there one of the fastest php frameworks out there there is still a ton of stuff taking a toll on its performance and then there is also a bunch of overcrowded code in some places basically the solution for all these problems in leaf 2 was to take leaf's features and allow developers to install them on demand so you need authentication, you install authentication. So if you don't need database stuff in your app, then there is no need to have those running and taking a toll on your app's performance. It was actually that pretty simple. So this together with a ton of other stuff ended up being Leaf 3. So Leaf 3 is just like Leaf 2 except that there are two major changes so first of all is switch from all the object oriented programming stuff to functions so leaf 3 is more of a functional framework than a class and namespace kind of framework so there's this big problem with php devs hating on namespaces and classes and all that stuff no one actually really likes classes anyway so 
Leaf 3 really solves that problem and gives people the chance to just use the applications without having to initialize classes and think about namespaces and all of that. The second major change is Leaf 3 is modular. So each feature is now an installable module. So you can pick out a particular feature you want and install that feature into your app. So if you don't need a feature, it's not in your app. It doesn't run, it's not initialized. It can't even be found in your code. So all of these together just make Leaf 3 super fast and all that allows the source code to be less than 30 kilobytes, which also adds to your app's performance. So these are the major changes, but of course a lot of stuff has gone down beneath, like rewriting of some features, uh, revamping the router, all to add to the performance and to make Leaf 3 way better than Leaf 2 ever was. So there's also the drive for developer experience. Leaf 2 and Leaf version 1 were all about simplicity. So simplicity, just making things as simple as possible. And so for instance, Leaf 1 and 2 were just about making things as simple as possible, even at the cost of developer experience. For instance, our auth functionality in version 1 and version 2 always required you to enter your database user table over and over again. So you'd log in, you pass in users, you register, you pass in users, you get the actual logged in user, you pass in users, and then there's so much repetition going on. So Leaf 3 comes in on that same feature and allows you to just pass in your database once and it's not required in any other function. So all of those stuff just show how in some cases the best developer experience may not be the most simple thing. So simplicity and elegance are also something Leaf 3 really cares about. And of course, we try to make it zero config. So you don't need to configure anything for both development, deployment, nothing really. You just need to build your app. It has a very flexible learning curve, so you can learn stuff on demand. You don't really need to cram the whole framework at once, just as done in other frameworks like Laravel and all those, where you need to master some concepts like providers and facades and all those, even before you get to building with the framework. So Leaf 3, just out of the box, is there's the core of the framework, just learn that. You can learn any other module you prefer or you want to use in your app on demand. So it's really simple for beginners, even simpler for people with prior PHP knowledge or if you've used another framework before. So all of these changes together, especially the new drive for developer experience, has led to a whole lot of stuff changing. So there was a complete change in Leaf from the Leaf core itself, Leaf MVC, Skeleton, and all those other frameworks. Also, a bunch of stuff changed, our documentation, and all that just led us to just taking Leaf as a whole and just sort of rebranding all of that. So you've already seen some of the changes we've made, but we'll just go ahead and talk about them. So drum roll. The change from Leaf 2 to Leaf 3. The main idea here, so you notice first of all there's a daytime theme and then a nighttime theme on Leaf 3. So the whole idea here was usability. As I said, developer experience, we are trying to make stuff more usable. And dark mode sort of symbolizes usability, so we just went along with that. Also, we have a leaf with five edges here and just two in leaf three. That's for simplicity. So the whole, the entirety of leaf was just completely rebranded along with all of these stuff. So it wasn't just our logo and theme. We had our documentation, our error screens, our welcome screen. Everything was just completely rebranded. 
different colors, different fonts, everything, just making stuff more usable and friendlier. So this is all I was going through with Leaf 2 and Leaf 3. But let's take a deeper dive into Leaf 3's features. So before we talked about Leaf 3 being more modular, but what exactly are modules? So basically, modules are serve yourself installable features, which means you can install only the features you need in your app. So if you don't install a particular feature in your app, then you won't have that. It's pretty much that simple. So your bare leaf app would come with just leaf call, request response, HTTP object. Um, so if you want stuff like authentication, you have to manually install that. And although it sounds really weird, you'd see how simple all of this stuff is. So you can actually now receive security fixes, bug fixes, or if you have an app running with a particular version which you're migrating, you can install a particular version of that module. So with all of these stuff, modules just help really speed up your app and make your app faster, make development faster. So also we have modules being framework and library agnostic. So for instance, most modules have functions that run directly with leaf, but the core of the modules themselves are framework agnostic. So they are not a leaf thing. You can use leaf modules in say Laravel, in Slim, in CodeIgniter, and they'll work perfectly fine which also allows you to incrementally add leaf and its features to your app. You can basically rewrite an app written in Slim with leaf bit by bit. That's just how cool it is. So the next thing is functional mode. So basically functional mode is just a fancy term. What it actually is, is a bunch of global functions which help you build your app cleanly and seamlessly without having to initialize leaf packages and that means you don't have to deal with any namespaces which is super amazing for a lot of people so another nice thing is when you install a module it can actually extend leaf's core functional mode which in turn gives that module extended power so you can install the auth module and instead of having to use leaf slash auth you can now just call auth out of nowhere and the really cool thing here is these global functions don't just return raw classes and packages just like that so leaf has this internal state that keeps track of every single module which has been initialized so it's initialized the first time and the next time it's called it just returns leaf's internal state which helps speed up your app tremendously instead of initializing classes all the time. So basically your apps are just getting faster and faster with the addition of functional mode and modules. So altogether, this gives Leaf 3 some tremendous speed. When benchmarks, Leaf 3 was actually running much faster than Slim. And if you've ever used Slim, you'd know that Slim is one of the fastest PHP frameworks out there. So for a framework which is simpler and more packed to actually run faster than that that should tell you a lot so we've talked about it but now let's actually see what leaf 3 looks like in code so i'll just open up my terminal real quick and we can get started with it so let's open up a new tab here and we can basically use the leaf cli again but this time we'll generate a leaf 3 app so we go the same way leaf create l3 up dash dash v3 dash dash basic so this will install dependencies and we're good to go you notice how the install time was way less than leaf 2's install time and that's just the beginning of leaf 3's wonders so we can switch to leaf 3 now and we open this with vs code so I'll just zoom in there and so this time you see the same structure here vendor hc access composer.json and composer.lock 
then we have our index.php and a random html file here so if we should actually run this we can run this with a leave cli again so I'll just do leave save and we can just open this up quickly in our browser and we get this so this what we're seeing here is basically just this html page so i'll open up our index.php so we see what leave 3 looks like and trust me you'll be amazed so the first thing you notice here is leave 3 is actually just nine lines long compared to our leave 2 app which had 11 lines so how did we get rid of two lines now well, let's take a look so first of all you notice here we are not initializing leaf we just up and use this this up function here so when you hover over it you can see return the leaf instance and return leaf slash up so what we are seeing here is functional mode so this is functional mode at work we have our app we are directly using response without having to call it on app and stuff like that so these are global functions provided by leaf and we can just call them without having to initialize any class or use any namespace so you notice down here that we are actually returning the instance of this class so we have this namespace and then the class here so we would actually need to do that but functional mode does all of this for us so we can just call app response request without needing to use any classes it's this simple so as i mentioned leaf is now even fitting into your app better where you don't even notice leaf's presence anymore so we are just creating a route and we are running the app it's literally this simple no classes no initialization we don't even need to initialize leaf itself and that's just how simple it is to work with leaf 3. it's much simpler much faster and so much more powerful so basically this is what leaf offers you now there'll be a lot more videos talking about leaf 3's features and all it has to offer so i hope to catch you in the next one